by a lot of musicians that have come out of Chicago, not just the Avant people, but the more traditional people too, because there's a common theme running through that city. I don't understand why it happened there, where it was always about original sound, an original voice, an original approach. Um, that combined with kind of the certain brand of black, black radicalism that I grew up in there, like, you were just, it was expected that you understood that you could do anything you wanted to do and that you should always hold in suspicion anybody that tells you that you can't and that you should always hold in suspicion anyone that claims that your idea is not valid, no matter what color they are, or what their gender is. <laughs> Yeah, that's an aspect of my personality that has always kind of disturbed me a little bit where I have this intense desire to connect always. And oftentimes the only way that I know how to do that is to come from a really personal place with that in terms of how I put the music together, how I want, I want my musical, musical output to be an experience for all involved, not just the musicians, but for everyone I want us to be able to kind of create sort of a womb together of possibility, um, which doesn't necessarily transfer to always being positive. I don't mind it if people come and don't like it. That's cool too. It's just creating kind of this moving organism together, this spontaneous way of connecting to strangers who are not really strangers because we're really all in this together. That has always been really important to me. I get really detailed feedback from people and uh, they scare me a little bit too. Now, I'm okay, I'm okay with that now because that is at the level that I want people to really engage. There's a power to those screen scenes. Um, though it's not something I can really do on the regular and I don't, uh, that chapter does not get regular performances for that reason. My whole thing about dealing with this history and dealing with these ideas and themes is I want some sort of experiential feeling of it. And I wanted to know what it felt like to do that, what it, the different changes and most of the things that I'm into are things that are experiential in nature. I want to know what pain feels like. I want to know what the depths of misery feel like just and that's a hard way to live but I just wanted to know and so 
But within those scream sings, there's a lot of joy there too. There's a level of joy. There's a level of life and living and experience. Um, those screams on that record were incredibly difficult for me because my mother had just passed away maybe 10 days before that was recorded. So those screams were therapeutic in a different kind of way. Um, but there's a welcoming to them too. It's, you know, we're here, I'm alive, let's celebrate what we do have. Um, I, it, the, the other thing about the coin coin work too is there are things that the work has told me that I've had to do that I did not want to do. That has been the speaking, that has been the singing, and that has been the screaming. That has, those were the things when I was putting that first chapter together, I was like, ah, I don't really want to deal with that. Why do I have to do that? Why can't I put an ensemble together and make them do that? But I felt I needed to have an understanding and experience of those ideas. Coin, coin, my master was ruler of the land, governor he was Nakedish where I was born and unheathenized in the Catholic Church. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I watched my parents die of yellow fever. last solo tour that I did at every show I made each crowd sing with me the slave auction from the first chapter and that you know it's <laughs> it's really I, I I forget how intense that is for some people and mid verse I always have to stop and say listen this is a happy song and you know and I'm telling you this is a happy song because and I want you to understand that without the bidding in of these people I wouldn't be here right now enjoying my life and so that's how I like to, to look at those things. And I like to, I know from this, I know from what I've experienced so far with the work that for whatever reason, for reasons I don't completely understand, but it makes me incredibly happy that people are able to go into a deeper part of themselves and connect the story I'm telling, the story of angst or the story of pain to some story of their own. And oftentimes after shows, people will come up to me and share the most harrowing stories with me to let me know that they were able to connect even though the history is different for them. Um, but I will say, you know, the first time I started doing that sing-along with people, especially because a good portion of my shows are usually, they're rarely people of color in the audience, it took a moment. You're like, all right, <laughs> I, just, I just sang a slave auction with a group of white people and those poor people and I, you know, I hope they understand and why, you know, am I damning these people? No, I'm not damning anyone, but I want to share this. I think, I think it's really important to pay attention to history because it is constantly repeating itself. And there's so many beautiful stories within it that can teach us so much. So I just can I will just continue to go in that direction. A bitter man, get a man, bitter man. A bitter man, get a man, bitter man. Yes. A bitter man, get a man, bitter man. The sun is hot and plenty bright. We gonna get down to business and get on tonight. Auctioning slaves is a real high art. Bring that young gal 
Roy, she's good for a start. Bit a man, get a man, bit a man. A bit a man, get a man, bit a man. A bit a man, get a man, bit a man. A bit a man, get a man, bit a man.